Oh, Jesus. oh, hey, you're back. Hey, check this out. Uh, today I'm cooking one of my favorites, okay? It's chicken gizzards, right? But I'm not using a meat tenderizer. I'm not using meat tenderizer seasonings. I'm not pounding it. I'm going to be using a double tenderizing method that I do from time to time, um, and, and it's delicious, right? It adds additional flavor, it makes them even more tender. I know you're gonna enjoy this. Look at this, this is what we're doing. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna tip it too much because I got sauce in here, okay? But I am gonna have one. Look at this, chicken gizzard, tender. I know you're gonna enjoy this. Check it out. Hey, this is Shraw Shraw. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. This is real simple, right? I got a Ziploc that I'm gonna be putting uh, the uh, cleaned gizzards in, cutting board knife. This is the second rinse. I also put salt in here. And I'm gonna re-rinse them and clean them again for the second time. Um, and I'm gonna show you what I'm taking off. Let me see if I can find one yeah, so you can see. See, here's, here's one, look. You see this? This yellow, yellow thing, you want to peel that off. See that? It, it peels right off. See? You want to get rid of that. Right? Then you want to look at it. You may see some excess uh, fat. You know, pull that off. And then it goes in the bag. Okay? Grab another one. Another one here we're looking. A little bit of excess fat. Pull that off. In the bag. Let me sit, just sit this up here. Make it easier. Okay, gotta get that excess fat off of there. Now, some people, they will leave that excess fat on. Because when you're cooking it, whether it be you know, you're boiling it or you're frying it, it normally um, just cooks away. But I don't like looking at it, so I get rid of it. Okay. See the excess stuff? I don't know if you can see it. But I'm pulling these, it's like spider web looking things. Want to get those off of there. But the main culprit, you really want to keep eye out on. And some people leave this on, I don't know why. You need to get rid of it but it's this yellow greenish yellow skin you got to pull that off man see that you got to pull that off see that you don't want to eat that all that look at that you don't want to eat that so you don't need to see the rest of this so uh, I'm going to do the rest off camera and I'll be back uh, for the next step, you want to look out for these, the ones that are folded over. You know, turn them inside out, because if you do, look at that. You got to get all of that out. You got to pull that whole thing, all that, all that green, you got to pull that off. You got to keep an eye out for that. Sometimes it requires that you turn some of these gizzards inside out. Right? You don't, look, you don't want, nope. You don't want to eat that. No. So what I've done is I put water in this bag, okay, and I got two teaspoons, two good sized teaspoons of baking soda. So now I'm going to add this to the water. Seal it up. 
mix it up. Now this is gonna go in the fridge for about an hour. Okay, 15 minutes to an hour. Don't go over that hour mark. Okay, because this is just uh, tenderizing number one. Now, why do I use uh, baking soda? Uh, and just like when I did my chitlin video, my hog marks video, um, baking soda, right, what it does is it pretty much stops the fibers of the meat from staying together like this. So what happens is it makes it hard for that bond to happen. So it's, they start separating the fibers, right? That's making it tender meat, okay? But you gotta be careful because it's very, very good at its job, okay? If you leave it in the, leave the baking soda on it too long, your meat will literally be mushy, right? Don't nobody want no mushy meat, right? So that's how it tenderizes it. So we're gonna go for 50 minutes to an hour. You know, I may pull it out early, just depends on how I'm feeling, right? Because I know this is a double tenderizing uh, technique that I'm doing. So the baking soda is just to give it an extra boost, if you will. So remember, it's baking soda, not baking powder, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now let's get back to it. Well, you know, life happens. So um, I'm gonna be pulling these um, out of the refrigerator, you know, a few minutes early. Um, but that's fine. But anyway, what you wanna do when you pull them out, now you want to uh, rinse, rinse them off real good. Get that baking soda off of them, okay? It's real good, let it drain, and while it's draining, we will get the uh, buttermilk ready. Let me go ahead and drain this and, and then clean it for you. So we have our chicken gizzards here. They've been rinsed. All the baking soda's been rinsed off of them. Okay, we have three cups of buttermilk. We have one tablespoon of kosher salt. One tablespoon of black pepper. One tablespoon of garlic, uh, granulated garlic. One tablespoon of granulated onion. We have a tablespoon of paprika. And lastly, we have two and a half tablespoons of hot sauce. Now you can use the hot sauce of your choice, okay? So now what I'm gonna do we're going to add all these ingredients here to the buttermilk uh, so we can keep it moving. Let's add the salt. The pepper. The paprika. Right, that in there. The granulated garlic. Granulated onion. And lastly, our hot sauce. Okay, get that in there. Now let's mix it up. Now, let's put our gizzards in a Ziploc bag, and then we're going to pour our buttermilk mixture on it. And the chicken gizzards has been washed again and drained to here. And you should be able to feel a slight texture change because you had it soaking in the, the baking um, soda. So you can see that first tenderizing step is, is already starting to work. Okay. Now, add our buttermilk. Buttermilk mixture in there. Now, I don't know if I said it before, but I'm using just over two and a half pounds of, of gizzards. Get that in there. Grab 
grab a spatula so I can get this out of here. I don't want to waste this goodness. All right, let's get this sealed up. Let some of the air out. Now I gotta mix it. All right, so now this is gonna go in the refrigerator. Now you could do it for two hours and you'd be good to go. But I'm actually gonna do this for 24 hours. So in the fridge you go. And then from time to time, I'll mix it up. But I'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. It's been 24 hours, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're going to strain this, right, into this bowl. And uh, then we're gonna make the uh, batter, the dry batter for it. Um, and then we're going to put this back in the refrigerator while it drains. There's a reason for that. Because if you've been watching my videos, you know my deep fryer is a big turkey fryer. So it's a three gallon fryer. Three gallons of oil is in there. And it takes about 45 minutes to an hour for it to heat up. And I don't want this sitting out for that long. Right? But what I'll do is when it gets when the fryer gets close to being ready, I will pull this out of the refrigerator so you can get the room temperature. I don't want it to sit at room temperature for too long. Okay? And then once it gets to room temperature, then we'll bread it, we'll let it sit for about five to ten minutes after we bread it, and then we're gonna fry it up. So let's go ahead and drain this. Just gonna pour this in. Shake it up a bit. And about every 15 minutes or so, um, we're gonna shake it up and move it around so that the excess buttermilk, um, flavored seasoned buttermilk will drain off of it. So shake it up, move this around. Good step, see what we're looking like, yeah. So I'm going to go over to the sink and pour the excess out of the bowl and then I'm going to cover it and put it in the fridge. So you can see, pour it out, give this another little mix. The gizzards, they feel good. They feel good. The double tenderizing. Now let's get this covered and put it in the fridge. While the oil is heating up, Let's work on our dry batter, our breading. So we have about three cups of all-purpose flour, okay? Got about a teaspoon of black pepper, about a teaspoon of kosher salt, about a tablespoon of granulated onion. We got about a teaspoon of paprika and a tablespoon of granulated garlic, okay? So let's get these mixed up. Here goes the pepper. Salt, onion, garlic, and the paprika. Get all that in there. Now, if you want to add cayenne to this, you can. Um, but you guys, if you watch my videos, you know, you know, even though Mama Shaw is not going to have too much of this, she's not a big fan of heat. So. I'm not putting it in here just in case she wants to have some. You know, but between us, you guys saw the other ingredients. There's hot sauce uh, in the uh, brine. I'm not going to tell her about that. Hey, y'all better not tell her about that. Just let her enjoy it. All right, so let's mix this all up. All right, so we're ready. So now we're just waiting on the oil. And then we'll start the process. As you can see, I have my gizzards here, the drained, right? And I have my breading. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put these in here. Just get them in here. And we're gonna bread them by shaking them up. Because the oil's almost done. 
You almost heat it up properly. Get this closed up. We're not taking the air out right now because we need to mix it. Okay, now let's put these on the on the cooling rack that's sitting on the cookie sheet. So there's one ladies on here. Shake the excess off. And now we're gonna let this sit for you know about 15 minutes or so. So the breading will absorb some of the moisture that's on the gizzard and it also will help the breading from coming off and the seasonings from coming off when you fry it. Okay, we're going to let these sit for about 15 minutes. And then we're going to fry them up. These guys are ready now. You can see. Yeah, so let's start adding these in. I'm going to add this whole tray worth. And we're going to let them cook for about anywhere from six to eight minutes. All right. Now at about the three minute mark, I'm going to stir them a bit. Make sure they don't stick. Stir these up a bit. Make sure they're not sticking. Well, oh, these are coming, up, coming along quite nicely. These might be done in six minutes. Yeah, it's been five minutes. These things are done. Yeah, these bad boys are done. Look at that. They're done. All that tenderizing. Spin up the cooking process slightly. So with this batch, frying at 350 degrees, looks like the sweet spot is five minutes. And that's all right. All right, we're gonna put the last batch in. So it looks like we're gonna cook these bad boys for five minutes. After about the first two minutes, shake them up, make sure they're not sticking together. But we're going to take them in two just to shake them around and move these around. Look at that. Nice. Keep them up. Alright, let's pull these guys out. Time is up. You have been paroled. Over here, so I can see these. Yeah, you talk, you get in the way. All right, let's see what how they came out. They look good, can't wait to taste them. So, let's get this plated up and ready to be devoured. Here we have it 24 plus hours in the making, worth every bit of it. We got a ketchup, right? We got a dynamite sauce, or two times tenderized chicken gizzards. You know they're gonna be tender and delicious. 
If you like this, hey, try it out. Give me a comment, let me know what you think. Hit me up on Instagram so you always know what I got coming up next. If you're not already subscribed, hey, subscribe. Become a part of the peanut gallery, right? Share it out if you can. That being said, this straw straw, hey, I am out because you know I love gizzards and I'm about to get in with the get in.